Water is life, and providing water is one of the main pillars of chameleon husbandry. Today I talk about not only how chameleons take in water, but how you can put together an intelligent hydration strategy that works for you. My name is Bill Strand, and you're watching the Chameleon Academy. The first thing we're going to do in today's video is go over how chameleons get their water. They live in bushes and trees, so it's not like they can go to the kitchen tap and get a glass of water. So we need to know how they get water in the first place. There are four natural tools for us to work with for hydration for chameleons. The first is obvious, rainfall. When it rains, the chameleon's world is filled with water all over, from the surfaces of the leaves to actually their head. And they have ample opportunities to drink however much they want. The second tool we have is morning dew. If the night is cool enough and the air was humid enough, there will be condensation on the leaves when the chameleon wakes up in the morning. And since many chameleons live in areas that have high humidity nights or foggy nights, this is a reliable way to get water. The third tool we have is humidity or fog. In the natural daily cycle in the wild or even where you live right now, the nights are humid and the days are less humid. In the areas where many chameleons are from, fog will come down and envelop the area, and essentially, the chameleon will be sleeping in a cloud. And fog, humidity, it's a powerful tool in preventing dehydration because one way that animals, humans, chameleons, all of us, lose moisture is through breathing. The drier the air around us, the more moisture it takes from our body just by simple breathing. And on the other side, the more humid the air, the less moisture is taken from our body. And so by giving a chameleon a high humidity night, we greatly reduce the amount of dehydration they go through during the night. And finally, the fourth tool we have are the feeder insects that they eat. If you've ever seen a chameleon chomp into a hornworm, you know exactly what I mean. Next, we're going to take a look at a chameleon's natural environment. Each chameleon species is going to come from a different place and so have different environmental conditions. Most chameleons come from around the equator. And around the equator, you don't have summer in winter as in a hot summer and a cold winter. You end up having wet seasons and dry seasons. In Kenya, where the Jackson's chameleons come from, they actually get two wet and two dry seasons. In Madagascar, where the panther chameleons come from, and in Yemen, where the veiled chameleons come from, you get a dynamic wet season where the world comes to life, and then you get a dry season that is so harsh, it literally kills every adult member of certain species. If you'd like to know more about the dry season, I invite you to listen to this podcast shown here, which I'm going to link to below, where I talk to Ewan Edwards and his experiences with the dry season in Madagascar. Or else this episode with Peter Nechas, where he talks about the dry season in Yemen. When we think about chameleons, we often think about a lush paradise. That is actually only half the story. And if we want to put together a holistic husbandry strategy, we need to know what happens in every season. And so when we look at the entire picture of a year, we find that our chameleons have to deal with a wide range of environmental conditions. From the wet season, where food and water is plentiful, to the dry season, where there's no food, no cover, and the chameleon is likely to face death if it doesn't take drastic action. And so now, it's up to us, as the herpeticulturalist, to figure out what we want to replicate for our chameleons. Now, your first response may be to, well, why not replicate the wet season? Because that's when they're most active, that's when they're mating, that's when they're the healthiest. Except we now need to take into account the limitations of what we have to work with. If we have constantly wet surfaces, our chameleons get sores on their feet, and the cages have problems with mold and fungus and bacteria. But luckily, we have found that we don't need the wet season to keep chameleons healthy and happy. Now, obviously, we don't want to go near the dry season where their life is threatened, and so we're going to find a reasonable middle ground here. What we're looking for is an ideal day and an ideal 24-hour period where the chameleon will be able to thrive. And luckily, with a little bit of thought, it's not that hard to do. I have come up with a daily hydration strategy that works very well for me. But you need to realize that a number of people have come up with different hydration strategies that work very well for them. And so when you go out into the community, you're going to see different approaches to hydration. What I'd like you to keep in mind is that if it works, if the chameleon's hydrated, it's a valid strategy. 
So don't get caught up in any fights over which one is better. What I'd like you to do at this point is just listen to the reasoning behind my hydration strategy and you can use it if it makes sense to you. If not, then use the principles behind how I came to my decision to help you make a decision that works better for you. And so with that, let's take a look at the daily hydration schedule that I use for the Chameleon Academy. This chart here shows how lights and hydration work together over 24 hours. You have your daylights, UVB, and basking light. This faded area means you keep the basking light on for as long as you need it, but it doesn't have to be on all day. And I have directions for fogger, mister, and dripper. If we start at midnight, our chameleon is curled up safe deep in the foliage. Sometime in early morning, I want to start my fogging. This can start at midnight or 2 a.m. You decide what's most appropriate based on how humid or dry it is. Now you notice I have a misting session for a couple of minutes at the beginning of the fogging session. This is because fog likes to bounce off of dry surfaces and laying down a layer of dew helps the fog stick around. And then I let the fogger roll a cloud into the cage, which will fill every corner, even where the mister doesn't get. The idea is that I want my chameleon breathing in humid air to help them maintain their hydration over the night hours. I show a solid line here, but if you don't have need of so much fog, then you can do 30 minutes on and 30 minutes off. How much fog you put into your system is 100% dependent on your ambient conditions and how much you need to bolster the humidity level. I turn the fogger off right before the lights come on in the morning, but I also turn on the misters for a couple of minutes to cover the cage surfaces with morning dew. This is so the chameleon can drink anything they want once they wake up and are moving to the basking bulb. Ideally, this hydrates them and they don't need any more for the rest of the day. I will do another misting session later in the evening just to set the stage for a humid night. Now in this hydration schedule, I don't mist throughout the day. The intention here is to keep the chameleon from dehydrating during the night and give them enough water as dew that they don't need to drink throughout the day. And this has a benefit that it allows the cage to dry out. Remember, that's a very important part of what we're doing here. To avoid the problems of the sores on the feet, to avoid the bacteria, fungal, or mold blooms, we let everything dry out. Now, that said, if you remember the fourth important point of us putting together a hydration strategy, it's that we have a test that we're doing it right and that our chameleon is getting enough water. Now there are two ways that we're going to be able to test our chameleon's hydration status. I'm gonna sit down for this one. The main way that we're gonna check our chameleon's hydration status is by the poop. If your chameleon is hydrated, the poop will be moist. If your chameleon is dehydrated, the poop is going to be crunchy. So yes, you now have to observe poop. Every successful chameleon keeper does their shift with poop watching because it's the window into your chameleon's physical health. And it's going to give you an immediate indication as to how well your hydration strategy is working. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples. And I apologize ahead of time, this won't be very appetizing. So a healthy, hydrated poop is going to be moist. This is a prime example of a wonderful poop from a hydrated chameleon. I present to you performance art. On the other hand, I'll show you a dehydrated poop so you can tell the difference. If the poop is moist, it means that what you're doing is working. If it's not, it means you have to do something different. You're gonna to have to add hydration in some manner or form. And the second hydration test I do is a behavioral test. That is where this dripper session comes in. With a dripper dripping on leaves, the chameleon will ignore it if they are hydrated. If they are thirsty and drinks from it, then I know they need more water. If they drink just a little, maybe the dripper is all they need. If they seem like they want more, then maybe it's time to bring in a little wet season afternoon rain shower. I know some people just turn on the misters and call it good. I go through a little bit more ritual and I will explain why. Since, as you remember, I don't like to surprise my warm, comfortable chameleon with a blast of mist, so I like to warn them the rains are about to start. To do this, I simulate a cloud cover coming in by turning off the main lights, and after things cool a little, I'll start the fogger, and then I'll start the misters for however long I would like to go. If you time this strategically, you can have this be the bedtime ritual, and just go to complete lights out once misting is done. Now just a note, when I say main lights, I actually have both 6500K T5 lights and an LED bar, so I have two light controls for daylight. If you only have one main light, you can still do this effect, 
if the room has ambient light. What you have to keep in mind, if you are doing this for hydration, is that sometimes chameleons put themselves to bed an hour before lights go out because they are excellent at figuring out consistent time schedules. So if you're trying to do a rehydration, you may need to do this sooner than that. If you're just including this as a normal part of the daily schedule, then you are in maintenance mode and the chameleon will move in and around your schedules and get what they need. Chameleons are intelligent and pick up on things quickly. So all I have to do is turn off the main lights and they know that the clouds have come in and there will be rain soon. So with all of this at my disposal, I can easily cover the hydration needs of my chameleon. So there's a holistic 24 hour hydration schedule that will effectively hydrate your chameleon, test to make sure that the chameleon is hydrated and it has something to add on if you find your chameleon is not hydrated enough. So this is a fail proof hydration schedule because it has checks to make sure that it's working. And this schedule has worked wonderfully for me. Hydration is a complex topic and it's hard to understand. I, I've spent years researching it. I've spent years putting together a hydration schedule and then years testing it. And so it's not simple, but I do have resources to help you understand it more deeply. If you go to chameleonacademy.com, you're gonna find a collection of all of these resources. And of course, there's a Chameleon Academy podcast. There's a multimedia educational effort that's available to you. I'll have links down below. And if you got value from this, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Have a great day. Take care of that chameleon. And I'll see you next time.